up, guys? And of course, as always, welcome back to another Wi-Fi battle with just really the scavenger. And yeah, today we're going up against Quan, who is from a Discord group that I'm looking for battle, of course, almost daily, which is linked down below. If you guys are going to battle me, make sure to go to that Discord group and ask for me and we set something up. So with that said, this is a PU match, which... Almost is PU for me because I realized as I made this team that Valplume actually is in you, so it's a lot stronger here. But definitely, if we're looking at the opponent's team here, we see Armaldo, Basculin, uh, Alteria, Lucario, Stunfisk, and um, I can't remember that name. That uh, Subat copy, Swoobat, I believe it's called. Uh, I myself is using a Scoff, Pizimian, Leftover, Stealth Rock, um, Palo Sand. Um, stick, Farfetch, yes, really wanted to use that with first impression. Vault Plume with Strength Sap, Rapid Dash with high horsepower leftovers, and Steel Silver Valley with the Fog. So, straight on at it, I think my best lead overall was the Pessimian, though I really was considering back and forth what he would really want to start off with. At the same time, it was really hard to decide which one was his rocker, whether Armald is going to serve that role, or Stunfist, but Looking at it, I felt that like Stunfisk made the most sense, so I was really hoping to lead up with something like that and try to get some momentum out of that. So, really, with all this said, let's, of course, as always, go into the match. And this time I don't need to edit anything. Um, I definitely prefer to do these post-narrated, but I definitely do this live recording though the post-narration, because the game is a lot faster. It actually is very, very easy to narrate this game now, because there are smoothly animation. I definitely appreciate that quite a lot. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to lead off with Gaith. And uh, yeah, he actually started with Armaldo. So that telling me one thing, that it's going to be defensive and it's going to be the one with Stealth Rocks. And the U-turn shows me that, if anything, that's 120 base power people doesn't even sting the Armaldo. As my easy switch in here is to go to Steel Valley. Since we are Steel, we have Flash Cannon. It should be able to actually do a fair amount of damage towards this Pokemon. But it goes for Stealth Rock over a knockoff. And I felt that that probably means... That I need to get rid of rocks as fast as I can. Since both Farfetch and of course Rapidash are weak to rocks. And that's not something I want to play with. As uh, so he's going to bring in the Lodicolo. Uh, now I don't have anything for Lodicolo. And I felt that that's, that's going to be a bad thing. My hardest hitting move here is Thunderbolt. And that's not going to sting it at all. And I really, really was scared that, you know, here comes the Swift Swim, you know, here comes the Rain Dance. So I'm going to send Gaith again, basically go for a U-turn and get some heavy amount of damage. As he goes around over a Skull, was really surprising. Luckily, we don't get the burn, but that was really unfortunate. Because that was an unnecessary damage towards that Pokemon. Now, he'll switch in Armaldo yet again. I did decide to go for a U-turn again. And we're still in that area where I can't necessarily touch this Pokemon, but it still breaks away. That's a good thing. And I can just bring Garuga, my Soul Valley, again. And this time I won't play as nicely. I won't do the, the weird play with, of course, the default. This time I'm here to hurt. And um, he actually going to switch out directly. Not want to take a gamble on that, which I fully understand as a showcase of Flash Cannon that I am a special set. And this is not going to do anything. Because Lodicolo is a war type and a fat one of that, and this is a fat Lodicolo. Uh, now, I'll do decide to go for Thunderbolt just to get as much damage as possible. Uh, and I do score a crit here and definitely showed me that, you know, this is this is not going to work. This is a matchup he will then eventually win. And consider my weakness of Stealth Rock, Zill Valley is not a Pokemon to be sacked that easily. And, and quite frankly, I really, really miss out there. I don't Air Slash. I definitely would believe that would have been the most helpful. So anyway, switch out Garuga, can't do anything here. Gonna bring Apothec, which is my Valplume. And quite frankly, Valplume is maybe a bit too powerful for this matchup as it switches into Stunfisk. Now I didn't I, I didn't care for Stunfisk. I went for a slush from thinking he would switch out. He actually stays in, but not only that, he has bounce. I'm I'm sorry to say it. This Stunfisk has bounce. Now I could of course, stay in and let him get this hit because it's so impressive. But at the same time, why would I? So I'm going to bring Haunted, which is of course my shiny, legit Palo Sand. It is not that legit. And the bounce doesn't do anything because it's a freaking castle. 120 base defense, 100 HP. It just screams bulk. So I go for the very, very easy stealth rock here as he brings in Alteria. Now I was... 
not gonna lie, kind of kind of scared about this Pokemon for one really good reason. If this is a Dragon Dance set, we are not looking that stellar, and I realize this as I am forced to switch into my Silver Valley, hoping that it doesn't carry Earthquake. And uh, he actually goes for a Draco. This is way better. Um, not only do we soak this Draco, but it also means that we have some momentum and some move to actually do something towards this Pokemon. Now, one thing that really was bothering me was I didn't have Ice Beam either. Actually, Flamethrower Thunderbolt realized that combination might not be as stellar as I thought. As I predict him here to switch out, I actually brought the Gate in. As we see Stunfisk come in, I was like, why? Why would you switch in the Stunfisk? You know, we it's redundant already. I definitely felt that he had stronger switching towards this Pokemon. So I was, I was a bit frustrated over that because I felt that was a very, very, it was a very good play. One could really see it as that. It was a very just a tough call. As we see Curse here, and I was like, you know, this is, this is not gonna go. This is not gonna end well for us, is it? As I'll just go for a Giga Drain. Do believe I try to do as much damage as I can. Just really scout how much defense this Pokemon have and it, that tells me nothing really as you go for a plus one earthquake and we have no investment in defense so it actually does roughly 50% but we have a very very good move and this is of course the new move introduced yet generation and that is of course strength sap it doesn't matter if you're specially orientated we will get recovery from this there are basically a full recover each time as long as the HP is high. And trust me, usually usually is roughly 140 in recovery, 120 recovery. So it's always better than synthesis, even if it is a special offensive Pokemon. Um, so anyway, with that in mind, I'm predicting him to go for Fire Blast. And yes, Farfig, my Rapidash is now here to stay. And it actually took, I, I do believe we are on the 17th turn before anything dies. And trust me, now with the, the boost in the flash of fire, we are now able to do what we've been waiting for, which is Blitz, the Stunfisk. Not really, that freaking hurts. That, that's a dead Stunfisk. And now my opponent actually will switch into some, a Pokemon I thought was really strange. I felt Basculin, but it actually brings our Moldo. Uh, and I didn't necessarily understood this play at first. I think it may be awkward yet to secure some damage. But he doesn't go for it, he does it out speed. And since my flash fire is boosting the flare blitz, that's that's a dead armoldo. That 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 shit is not gonna change. That that's a dead armoldo, if anything. And yes, I felt alright. This time the Basling will come in. I am forcing myself to get some very, very tough um damage towards me. But no, he brings the gold bat. I guess for gold bat, I don't know. <laughs> and um even here, the damage output on this Pokemon is not necessarily that very high outside of a possible Call Mine. And the Air Slash do not actually get a um, mighty flinch on me. And the Wild Shard is enough. The Wild Shard is enough to KO. And that brings down Swoobat too. So we are... Farfig, the Rapidash, is just doing stuff. Which I def definitely didn't expect. And now Basklin comes in. It's not like that, that you know, finally, right? You know, this Pokemon definitely ruins me with the depth ability awkward yet, so I'm not I'm not gonna stay in. I mean there's really no point to as I can just bring a Portek yet again. And as stated before, this Pokemon is too OP. I feel for my opponent because Valplum is disgusting in this matchup. As it doesn't do anything, I'm really wondering whether or not this is Rockhead or an adaptability. But if anything, it definitely didn't hurt as much as it could have. As it brings in Lord of Colo. Um now I do believe I went for us. Uh, Strength Sap again, predicting him to possibly switch moves, which didn't happen. And uh, we get our full recovery, which is nice. So we we, we all we were already there. As um, I will go for a Sludge Bomb here as he goes for Rain Dance. And I felt this, this was okay. You know, the Rain Dance boosted adaptability. Basculin is something I definitely do fear. But we are in a good spot now. We are definitely still in a good spot. As Sludge Bomb, of course, will annihilate Lodicolo. Because it's you know it, it, it's definitely not resisting that, and he brings in the Altaria, and um, I was waving myself back and forth. You know, do I want to take a Draco? Do I want to wave around this Pokemon? I really, really, really need to sack something, and I definitely believe Gate was the better Pokemon to switch in to sack. Uh, what I basically came down to was that Valplum still fill a key part towards Basculin of walling that out and forcing it out, and. Um, 
that is something I don't want to take a big risk on. So I felt that was my overall best play. As I'll now go to Farfig, basically go for the damage as it keeps going for the course of Draco. And I really just want to see whether or not Wild Charge could be enough to fell the Altaria. It is sent, it shouldn't, and quite frankly, I think it's fair to see that Draco is, of course, going to knock out my Farfig, my Rapidash, which have been incredible this match. Definitely all credits to Rapidash. What an extreme Pokemon to use. Definitely a Pokemon I feel is underappreciated. As uh, now I can just bring my Garuga, and what I'm gonna do is go for the very safe play and just go for Flash Cannon, just knocking the Pokemon out, and then basically hope for. Actually, with a Thunderbolt, why did I do that? Why did I? Okay, in case it switches to Basically, I guess. Fair enough. I guess my 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 past self was a lot smarter than I am now, as the Basculin comes in now. Now I did decide here to not go for uh, Thunderbolt or anything like that. I decided to go for Flash Cannon. Since we're now are in the end game, and I felt that I I really just want to use my Farfetch. I really really want to use Farfetch as it goes for that ability waterfall. That of course go into KO. I mean, come on, right? That's that's damage right there. As I go into sending ducks, and I'm finally going to capitalize on the first impression ducks, and that's gonna be the game. So to my opponent, and I definitely mean this. GG Kevorn, I really really enjoyed this game. I'll be completely honest though, my team here with Valplum not being a part of PU definitely made this game a slightly unfair if you ask me. I had a lot of fun but I also will definitely enforce that aspect that yeah, my team was a bit too powerful for the matchup we were facing. Valplum really is a disgusting Pokemon and if there are no misprit in this like the matchup, yeah, it, it's going to be rough. Valplume is too strong here, and really, I'm sorry for my side of capitalize on that Pokemon. Definitely shouldn't have been there. That said, though, really like the bounce stun fist. That is, that is some shit. That I really love stuff like that. So, anyway, guys, as always, thank you for of course watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if anything else, you know, as always, do support the channel by leaving a like and stuff like that. And I'll see you as always in the next video. Till then, of course, as always, take care. Bye.